So this is a maple log that I had salvaged from my firewood pile probably a year and a half ago, something like that. And at the time, I couldn't lift it up. It's, I'm going to guess, somewhere 22, 24 inches at the biggest end. Um, and it's probably around a 1,200 pound log. Probably a little more than that because uh, when it was wet, I couldn't pick it up. I could drag it. But now that it's dried out some, I had the opportunity to be able to move it. So I need to make some tabletops, some live edge tabletops on either side of the pith of this log. So right now what I'm doing is, uh, I forget what the actual dimension was now, it's a few hours ago, but I had measured down probably somewhere around 18 inches and I'll take a slab cut off the top and you'll see I'll just lay the slab alongside the log right on the deck. And there's not much room for two of these logs and slabs at the same time, but I want to save that slab because it's good hardwood and it's good and dry hardwood, and I'll put that into my own firewood pile. So I don't think that's selfish. My slab, my log. So if you notice, and you're a keen eye, you would have uh, paid attention maybe and saw some sparks flying. There's a few rocks frozen to this log. And I had an old blade on. Um, the blade was sharpened, but it's not a new blade by any stretch of the imagination. So what I'll do is I'll try to square this cant up or at least take the boards off that I need for the, uh, what I call them, jacket boards on the outside of the live edge pieces. What I want from those jacket boards are inch and a quarter thick maple slabs, and I'm going to use those for stair treads. I'm gonna try to get maybe eight or 10 of them on either side. This log is nine feet long. So that will allow me easily to get um, each one of those boards that I take off, those jacket boards will be two stair treads. So if I can get five of those boards, that's 10 stair treads, that's enough to um, sell for stair treads or somebody's house for sure. So that's what I'm doing now. You'll see it's cutting down to the, um, just take another inch and a quarter mark off of this and see if you see more sparks. I'm trying to pay attention to the video. And, do a voiceover at the same time, it's not as easy as one would think. Somewhere around here, I thought I saw sparks, but maybe not. Watching, watching, watching. Nope, I made it through without sparks that cut. Good stuff. I can definitely hear the damage that's been done to that blade. It's not cutting nearly like it should, just it, it's hit a rock at least twice, maybe three times, I'm guessing. The log is frozen. It's been below freezing here for a few days, and it's going to stay below freezing, I think, for a few more days. So I want to try to get this opened up. I told the lady that I was uh, selling these tabletop slabs to, that I'd have them done by lunchtime. And today, I want to go to my camp in the woods, my little off-grid cabin. As a matter of fact, that's where I'm editing this film right now. <laughs> so I feel like I'm... Just sitting here with a roaring fire going on a beautiful, cold, clear, starlit night right on the frozen lake. I'm hearing the, listening to the ice sing to me. I interrupt this regularly scheduled broadcast to let you know what the heck I'm up to here. This was a log, maple. This is a sugar maple. It's about 22 inches, I think, at the small end, about 24 or something at the big end. It's a good sized log. When this came to my firewood pile, I couldn't lift it with my tractor. And it was, it's been sitting on the ground over a year, I think, thereabouts. Anyway, it's got some spalting going on. And I have a lady that builds tables and she wants a couple of live edges somewhere if I can get her a couple of these planks off the top of this sugar maple she will be able to, to stitch them together I'm gonna to only edge one edge of it so she gets two live edges she can make it as, as uh, wide as she wants but I'm gonna make them two and three quarter inches thick so that she can easily rip them with her table saw at home if I say easily this is not gonna be an easy an easy job but I'm gonna get her two of these slabs it's gonna be beautiful and uh, I'll show you what, 
what's happening here in the middle of this. By the way, I ordered another microphone. So this is about as nice as it gets for a piece of maple. There's no curl in it. There's no gorgeous figure or anything like that. But this is when this is dressed and planed, it'll give her. I'll try to make sure that she gets uh, small enough pieces that she can run them through a, um, a homeowner style planer so that she can dress them the way she wants them dressed. So otherwise she'll, she'd have no way to, to handle them. This wood is good and dry as well. So if I grab my handy dandy moisture meter, I bet it's around 30%. 27.7, 27.5, 26. That won't take very long for her to dry to get that down to where she wants to, to work it. She's going to put it maybe in her basement. There we go. Uh, that'll be under 30 by the time that settles out, I bet. There we go, under 30. I don't sell um, kiln-dried lumber. I sell the rough product and my end user turns it into whatever it is they want to turn into. The slabs that I take that I've taken off the jacket boards around these live edge bits, they're going to be made into stair treads. So I'm going to put those aside and uh, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to take one two and three quarter inch slab off of that. Then I'm going to flip the whole thing upside down and end up with a two and three quarter inch slab at the bottom. So it'll make perfect sense. I think when you see it going and because I don't have a microphone, I'm probably going to do a voiceover. I'm not going to try to speed it up. I'm just going to show you what I'm up to. My day today is a bit rushed. It's uh, nine minutes after eight in the morning already. <clears throat> and I'm out here at first light trying to get things geared up. I've got my tractor out and uh, moving that log around, get it staged. But I've got 220 square feet or board feet of one inch spruce as well to make. And uh, then once that's done, I'm heading to the woods for the weekend. I'm going to my camp, my little off-grid cabin. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to cut a little hardwood. I'm going to open the road up. It's been oh, a month or more since I've been in there and the wind has been absolutely vicious. So I want to make sure that the road is open enough that I can get in and out with my tractor, my ATV, that kind of thing. So I can do some logging this winter. That's my plan anyway. So pack a bunch of food and uh, <laughs> so, all right, turn this camera around and you guys can finish watching me open this log up. What you're seeing me do there now is pump up the pressure in my lube tank. I run straight washer fluid this time of year and it drips on the blade to keep the blade cool. Believe it or not, even as cold as it is and milling frozen logs, I'll still um, definitely need blade lube. That blade will get hot enough that it'll expand and loosen up. And what I just did there when I went off of camera, off of screen, is I went to turn on my, my blower. I keep forgetting to do that. I shut it off because if I want to talk into the camera, then it's kind of distracting in the background. So. I switched that off. I've got a nice slow cut on this, and uh, we'll just see what size board this comes off. I forget which one it was. It might be a two and three quarter. But we're trying to get trying to get it down um, oh far enough that it makes it manageable. I still won't be able to lift those slabs. I'll have to sneak in with my tractor and get those. So yeah, that's one of the big big wide two and three quarter inch wide slabs. So now yeah, we'll probably put the saw head up and run it all the way back. That lift mechanism that I have is just a series of chains and sprockets and it's effortless to lift. There's a child can can turn that crank. It's got a band brake on it to keep the head from creeping up or down. It's rock solid. When I set that at whatever measurement I want it set at, then uh, so I'll set it for my next, actually I'm, I'm going down to my next measurement now. I'm just going to fast forward or cut a little bit of this out while I'm going to get my tractor.
So now I've gone to get the tractor and I was trying to pick it up at first, but it's a little slippery and I didn't want to scar up the, the board behind it. And that's not exactly what I had in mind. It didn't go as planned, but anyway, it's on the ground now. I can stay there and I'll, uh, I'll try to pick it up later. Maybe I'll cut the other one off. I need to flip that log now upside down. So that square cant or the live edge cant, I'm not sure what you'd actually call that. But the uh, rest of that log needs to needs to be flipped 180 degrees and it still weighs a good five or six hundred pounds so i'm going to be using all of my leverage on that pv and a lot of my brawn and very little of my beauty to get this upset so once i get it moving it's fine sometimes i have to put my backstops up just to give it some little farther support maybe or uh, something slippery to slide against and uh, those will come up in the air 14 inches those uh, backstops and they're perfectly perpendicular so that's how I know that my cant is square I can just pay attention to how tight that is if there's any air gap between the bottom or the top then I know that my um, cant isn't square <clears throat> so I'm wrestling a little bit here just because I have too much stuff I got about I don't know I think my deck uh, is 44 inches wide so those boards are about 20 inches wide something like that so plus the log, so I've got all of the real estate used up that I possibly have. So I'll try to get, there we go, got it down on the bottom now. And uh, sometimes an important thing as well is to make sure that um, there's no bark or no frozen sawdust, especially when it's frozen frosty day like today, make sure that there's nothing in the way of uh, making that flat on the, on the ground. So. So now I gotta get rid of these boards. These are the gonna end up being stair treads. So I'll make a I'll make a pile on the ground there, just just where I have to walk probably, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way that works out. So now I have to figure out uh, calculate two more of those stair treads. So one and a quarter times two is two and a half inches, and I have to go work backwards from the bottom because I want two and three quarter inches at the bottom. So I'll make sure that I come up there. Uh, far enough to take the first slab and of course remember I want this slab because it's such good hardwood I save all the hardwood slabs out of my milling for myself and I'll put a half a cord in my own woodshed of these hardwood slabs so whether it's ash or maple or oak or whatever it is that I'm milling birch I have milled and sold a lot of yellow birch to a cabinet maker so it's, uh, there's lots of Lots of hardwood slabs. I know somebody's going to make a comment about how much wood I wasted in that slab and there's a method to my madness and it is completely selfish and self-preserving because that snow that you see on there is more frozen gravel in that 
uh, in the bark. And I don't have a debarker. Um, it's silly to try to set up a pressure washer this time of year. And I think it's just best just to take the extra two inches of meat off of that and not worry about it. I'm going to do plenty well on this log as it is. So this, the, the profit in this log, I'm going to make more off of this one single log than if I were to make a full cord of wood. So it's really beneficial to try to take a treasure log like this, I call it, and turn it into profit. All right, so now I'm staging two more stair trade blanks, and that will give me, I should theoretically end up with a two and three quarter inch slab to match the first slab at the end. That's my plan anyway, and if my math is right, measuring that, that should be five and a quarter inches, and uh, I don't remember exactly what that's was, but I remember I never had any moments wondering why my math didn't work out it usually works out pretty well in my favor to be honest with you i've got i've got this manual mill dialed in pretty well that i have a yardstick a simple yardstick and it measures as far up i can put that head up into the air 27 inches all the way or i should say i put the blade 27 inches from the surface of the deck to the bottom of the blade that lets me cut a 36 inch diameter log so between the blade and the bottom of the engine mount, or the bottom of the carriage, I should say, that um, that is going where my drag back arms are, are fastened to. If I remember, I think that is 14 inches, so I can, I've got a pretty good, pretty good sized throat that I can put a, a big sized log through there. So 36 inch diameter, 16 foot seven long, I've got 22 horsepower, a four inch clutch and a 12 inch wheel, I've got the motor dialed in so that the blade is running at 5,200 feet per minute, which is the ideal, the optimum speed for uh, for a bandsaw mill. So, so I'll speed this portion up. We'll just watch that blade come through. Um, of course, it's going way slower than I would be if I was cutting spruce or pine or even ash. This sugar maple or rock maple, it's its hard stuff. And to keep that blade from wandering any at all, I've got to go at this pace. And remember, this is an old blade. The blade's dull now at this point. So I'm pushing the blade to the end of its life, for sure. And what we'll be, we will be left with at the bottom of this is two and three quarter inch live slab and then I have to put both of them back on the mill, stand them up straight and edge them both together. So I need to put my backstops up. To catch this we want to edge the top of that. I'm not sure I'm going to edge the top or the bottom. I just need to, to have a look at it. Whichever one's the least parallel. It seems to me that side is, uh, is fine. Now I have to move all of those stair treads. Probably just throw them on the tractor bucket. I'm assuming anyway, that's what I've done. And then I'll stack them and sticker them. They're still heavy though. So wrestling with those, and now I'm going to try to pick that up. Nope, I abort that mission in a hurry. <laughs>
So back I come with an empty grapple on the tractor. I'll slide that out to the edge of the concrete floor and then as gently as I know how, pick that up and lay that back on the mill deck. Perfect. I'll tell you, I'd be completely lost without that tractor. I, matter of fact, I, I could not do this job without that tractor. That does just about everything I ask it to do. I'd love to be able to have it lift uh, some more weight. The ideal tractor, in my opinion, would be somewhere around 40 horsepower. It would be able to lift a ton. It would have a cab with air conditioning and heat. And uh, it would have a good-sized PTO output so that I could run just about any piece of machinery that I'd want to run. So the next thing I have to do is stand those up and get rid of some of the debris that's stuck in between there so that they'll you know, sit flush with each other. So I can pick it up that way, just couldn't pick it up flat off the bottom. I'll put a, a log dog up just to send it in. Doesn't have to latch it, now I'll go in the back and I'll, uh, I'll stand them up straight. And remember I said that my backstops were perpendicular. It's not exactly critical either that they are, um, that this cut is straight. This, these boards have to be jointed before they get assembled, cut and jointed I would assume, before they get um, assembled as a tabletop. So remember she's not getting the finished product from me. She has to create the finished product from the, the rough stock that I give her. But I'm trying to make sure I can save her a step at least and if she I'll give her one square edge to work from that she can run it through a table saw or a jointer or whatever so so this is my 18 inch cut so I just measured to make sure that we're at the 18 inch mark and then I'll put that sawmill head back up to the 18 inch mark and when I say 18 inches I'm looking at physically looking at a pointer it's a wire pointer painted red and it's lining up to the numbers on a yardstick a physical yardstick with inches along the side that's all it is and at the 18 inch mark i know that my bottom of my saw blade the bottom of the cut or the top of the cant will be exactly 18 inches off of the deck of the sawmill it's pretty simple and pretty accurate and uh, usually don't include or, or calculate the kerf when i'm milling and um, i do when somebody needs to and i've got a cheat sheet there just to my left side on the wall inside that end of the of the shed that tells me what I need to uh, look if I'm trying to match up store-bought lumber for instance I have a cheat sheet that includes the kerf into the into the cut and allows for that but other than that it's not uh, it's not a critical measurement for me all of my one inch boards are 15 16 actually boards by whatever dimension if it's uh, six inches it's actually a six inch wide board but it's the thickness of it that will lose the kerf and the, the matter of fact, the last board that I cut is 15 16, so it matches. That's the lowest that I can cut with this machine. So there I took those two top slabs and put them in my own hardwood slab pile, fetch the tractor and come in and try to scoop these up without just as gentle as I can be. I don't have a third function on the front of this tractor like other tractors may have. It's just a diverter valve which allows me to convert the curl function into the grapple function. So the I can't do both of those things at the same time. So I can't curl at the same time that I can squeeze or open the grapple. So, and there I'll see me laying that on the back of my old truck. That's my lumber delivery truck, that old Ram. I got it back from the transmission shop. It works like a brand new truck again. It's such a treat to drive. So both the transmissions were acting up at the same time in that truck, in both of my trucks. So I had them both had this, both trucks spent time in the shop. The first one was under warranty, and uh, this fellow here was uh, under out of my pocket. But it still was very reasonable to have that old truck fixed. I'm, uh, I'm glad I got it. There was actually three different things wrong with it. Surprised me. They're just contributing to one symptom. So I don't know how much more I need to talk about this. That's one easy way that we can turn one single log into more than the profit on two full cords of wood so those um, boards each of those boards i retail for 120 dollars just like that and uh, i think that's reasonable 240 dollars it's a it's a lot of wood and it's going to be a beautiful 
uh, tabletops. All right, that's all, folks. Ended up getting uh, two beautiful two and three quarter inch by 18 inch slabs out of that log. That's about as good as I can expect. Each one of those sell for $120. And that's just the way it scales out. And uh, that's sugar maple. There's some spalting in it. There's some character in those uh, in those logs. And I split the pith right down the middle so that both of those uh, pieces are, are gonna be a book matched. So I cut the edge off. Of course, they can open that up and they can make whatever they want out of it. They can have, there's a ton of tables that they can make out of that if they want. Beautiful, beautiful wood. So anyway, that's how you can make out of one log as much money as you would if you would have sold a cord and a half of wood. So what am I into this for time? Oh, I don't know, 40 minutes, something like that. And it's a lot of work because it's manual mill and I'm moving stuff around. And that doesn't even include the, uh, Oh, probably 10 stair treads. Yeah, 10 stair treads or so that I took off of that. So anyway, hopefully by next week this time, I'm going to have a microphone again. And I bought a maybe a little better quality one, one with a, looks like a dead cat. You know, it's got that furry ball on it that's going to uh, mask some of the wind that blows through here. Because it's a windy place here today. Windy place most of the time. But anyway, that's all I got to say about that. I'm going to open up some spruce logs, fill the truck for a delivery, and get back as quick as I can so I can load my um, grub and supplies I need for the weekend at the camp. So I can't wait. Over and out, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend.